Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestling Art with Chris Things. Do the hammer. To another edition of Wrestling Art with Chris Things. I am Chris Things, Brian, your host. Art dude, hopefully, hopefully you'd consider a friend. You know, if you if you've been listening to this show a little while, we are we are bloody 35 episodes deep in this <laughs> this thing. And you know, I'd like to think even if you finally started a little bit, we've got a little bit of rapport going, you know? So if I'd like to think that I could uh, you can consider me a pal, uh, and and I consider you you guys pals too. So if you ever ever want to reach out and say, "Sup, Chris, what's going on?" Uh, you know, I always appreciate it. But um, we're back. We're back after a little bit of a, a hiatus. We had last week off, which which between you and me, I did feel a bit guilty about. I was I was off, you know, on on a uh, holiday, uh, on on vacation for for the week away in Tasmania. So I. I wanted to do all the normal things that I do every week uh but at a certain point um you know you you got to got to draw a little bit of a line here so I'm sorry I didn't have an episode for you uh last week uh but we're making up for it this week we're back to our match of the week edition of the podcast where we talk about uh my favorite match that I happened to watch that week uh so much so that I made an art of it um, and we, we chop it up and we talk about that. But so we've got three to talk about here. So we've got a triple header main event, triple match of the week edition here. Uh, got my dear friend Jeremy uh, coming on the show a little bit later to talk about that. Um, but, uh, but before that, uh, again, I, I, I just wanted to mention, you know, I um, have this triple header test mate here, right? And so I wasn't able to do the, the episode. Um, I, I still made sure to do the, um, the match of the week when I was down there, you know, every, every Friday in Australia, every, every Thursday for, for you in America. It's very important to me that I get this, this match of the week, uh, up. It, it, you know, it probably sort of rings back a little bit to that, um, wonderful conversation that I had with, uh, with, with Matt Charlton, uh, Shining Wizard Designs on our last episode haven't listened to that yet please do a delightful time um but yeah it's sort of like i think that i feel a bit like it's a responsibility it's like i have to do it rain hail or shine i have to get this art up um and you know it's not like i feel like i have a, a contract in place or whatever a lot of it's probably in my own head but it's important to me so i got that done i was i was happy with that uh the the last of our match of the weeks we'll be talking about today the the bull nakano versus kyoko and Oi one um but yeah it got me thinking you know i i was like okay i got that done um but no a little there is a little bit of a, a pang of guilt that i felt from from taking a week off from doing all my art things um especially at a time when i'm trying to do everything that I possibly can to, to pull this, push this, this thing uphill, um, you know, make it the, the full-time career that I'm, I'm really wanting it to be. And that it requires the work. It just requires you to be working all the time. So then to take a week off, uh, gallivant around Tasmania, I did feel a little, a little guilty about that. So probably shouldn't, <laughs> you know. I think we all need that balance. We all need a little bit of a break sometimes. Especially if it's something that you're so passionate about that you're thinking about 24/7, I think it's very important to detach. Um, so yeah, I think I think that's something I probably need to embrace a little bit, let go of that guilt, um, you know, and uh, and and be like, okay, sometimes sometimes you you get to have a break. <laughs> but I think that detachment was good. It sort of got me back to this week with like a real new sort of like fervent energy to want to do all of the things, um, to want to kick all the goals. So if I've got a, a super um, 
big month looking looking here on my my events page of christhings.com.au uh, of on location events that I'm going to be doing in the month of July uh, actually starting this Saturday with the great artist market uh, at Fallon's Barrel Hall in Brisbane, Australia, where I, along with uh, 50 other rad local artists, uh, will be doing this thing. And it's an artist market. It's free. If you want to come along, please do. I'll have all my, my uh, you know, my fancy prints. I'll have some originals. I'll have some new stuff that I've never had before in any of these other markets. So hopefully that's exciting for you. T-shirts. Just got some fresh t-shirts. I uh, hear they're ready to pick up, so I'll have those for the event. Um, but yeah, things are going to be a good time. And then I've got so much other stuff going on uh, for July as well. Honestly, a little bit scary, but also, you know, kind of exciting. I feel like I'm really like, all right, we're back doing all the things. Here we go. Uh, I've got wrestling shows I'm going to be selling my art at. Uh, different makers markets, uh, all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to be busy. I'm going to be busy, but um, I'm happy about that. But yeah, if, if you all want to jump on there, if you're in the Brisbane area or Sydney or Melbourne, I'm going to be traveling all over. <laughs> uh, but I'm spoke, stoked to be doing so. Uh, so yeah, exciting times up ahead. Uh, and I uh, yeah, hope if uh, I get to meet some of you all and, and have a little bit of a chat face to face because that really is, uh, is a very fulfilling for, thing for me to get to do. Another uh, big significant kind of development. I actually had uh, my uh, that, that current art show uh, that I've had up at, at Scratch, the big solo show uh, that I, I uh, got to, to do it was an excellent experience. Uh, finally, that was uh, taken down. I got to come down, come around to the Scratch and see it for last time last night before it came down. Uh, and I just did that on my own, you know, I went along and I just, um, I wanted to sort of soak it up one last time while it's on the walls, um, you know, sort of look at the achievement of doing a show like that, because it was a lot of work, you know, I put a lot of work and passion into that thing, um, and you know, part of it, I went along and you do look at the little red dots, <laughs> you know, on the, the uh, price cards next to the artworks, and look, you know, to be honest, not, not all of the things uh, sold. Um, but that's okay. That's not that's not the overall goal here. You know, it's obviously good when I do make money at these things, but I'm not doing it for that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm think uh, it, it was uh, the actual accomplishment of doing it, of putting that all together, of doing a solo show, of putting the time and love into it. Um, I think that's the important thing. Uh, so I, I will have some of these uh, these artworks, uh, these originals and, and framed fancy prints uh, available at some of these future in-person events. So you have that to look forward to. And I will be, uh, you know, posting them online for all of my friends who are not in the Brisbane area for you guys to get to enjoy it as well. Uh, so, yeah, that was that was a fun little moment, a nice little uh, sort of moment for me to reflect, I guess. Um, but outside of that, I've got a fun little thing for you here. So, uh, my dear friend, John Craft, uh, who I've had on the show before, he sent me a little, uh, a little message <laughs> yesterday as a, a little audio update for a fun little thing that happened. And I thought I'd share that with you today. I thought you might dig this. I love this story. This, this really, uh, tickled me. So, uh, just a sec, let me, let me, <laughs> very professional here, um, uh, I, I don't actually know how to import this audio, so I'm just going to hold it up to the speaker, I think, I think that'll be okay, he did the height of professionalism here, let's, uh, let's, let's uh, see what, uh, John Craft, uh, a former mo roving Mexican reporter who's not actually Mexican from the, the previous podcast, uh, he has a little anecdote for some local uh chicago wrestling happenings all right here we go take it away john okay so tna chicago was uh friday and saturday and then deadlock pro a newer indie was running a show at logan square auditorium on sunday uh speedball was at the tna taping for saturday and then he was also advertised as on the card for deadlock pro on sunday so anyways, Sunday, we're mulling about the Logan Square Farmer's Market, just kind of walking around, checking it out. It's definitely one of the bigger ones in town. And we saw that there was, like, a shitty lucha ring set up, 
and they had mentioned that they were going to have matches at 1 o'clock. So we're, like, walking around, checking everything out. It's hot as shit. Um, and anyways, like, we go back to watch the start of the Lucha show, and I shit you not, it's, like, a bunch of no-name wrestlers, right? Like, I'd never heard of most of these people. A couple of them I'd worked with at, at Galley Lucha Libre in Chicago. But then I hear the announcer go, Mike Bailey, Mike Bailey. And I turn to Marcella and I'm like, what did he just say? And sure enough, Speedball comes out. <coughs> he wrestles and the canvas is super hot and he was barefoot. So he ends up like asking like somebody for a bottle, of, like their bottle of water and like dumping it on his feet. And then he just wrestles outside the ring. Uh, he picks up the win. So I message him on, on Facebook because we're, we're Facebook friends and everything. And I'm like, hey, it's Bandito's friend. Um, just a question. Like, what, or I, I, I think I just said, like, what a treat to see you at the farmer's market. And he immediately messages me back and he's like, ah, dude, I just, I was just walking by. He, he said he was trying to go to Logan Square Auditorium. It was the daytime and drop his bags off, but he couldn't get inside. And nobody was there yet, so we had to kill time. And he was just walking around the farmer's market, and he saw the wrestling ring, and there was a tent set up for, like, a locker room. And so he goes in there, and he goes, hey, uh, I was just curious if I could leave my bag in here. And then somehow they were like, I mean, do you want to wrestle? And it was a free show, so, like, everybody was working for free. But um, he just worked for free. And he, he didn't, like, kill himself or anything, but, yeah. I love that story so darn much. <laughs> Just so you know, he did not, like, send that in, um, you know, with the idea that I was going to put this on the show. Uh, he just sent that in for my own amusement. Uh, what, a, what a bloody sweetheart Mike Paley is. <laughs> Um, just to say, you know, I did officially, you know, ask John if he was comfortable with me putting that on here. Um, he said he was, so I, I think that was great. Uh, we'll see how we go in the future. Maybe we can get more, um, roving Chicago, uh, wrestling, uh, anecdotes uh, such as this from John Craft. <laughs> tickled me so much. All right, all right. I think that does us up for now. Uh, I I think we're we're ready for some match of the week action. Uh, let's throw over to uh, Chris and James Vanderbeek in the studio. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I am very excited for the latest uh, latest match of the week. We actually have three matches of the week to discuss, a triple header, and no one that I would more prefer to discuss said matches with than the, the esteemed uncle of Beaks, James Van Der Beek. Tell Wait me. a minute. <laughs> Welcome to the I show. I don't think that's how it works out. I'm not the uncle of all Beaks. I am just the Uncle Beak, the epitome of all beakiness. No, um, that's ridiculous. Hey, Chris, what's going on? <laughs> Good date. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm honestly stoked we got to do this one. It was a, a little bit um, up in the air, right? You had, you told, you just told me before we started recording, you had a, little a, dicey. a tree fall on a transformer at your work. The power went out. You weren't sure you're going to be able to make it. Technically. The I work from home, so a tree fell in the transformer locally and knocked out the power for the entire neighborhood. And evidently, my stepmom said the entire town of Milltown, or Milton as it's called. I would just assumed it's a derivative from Milltown. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I took a nap because I was like tired. I'm like on my lunch break. I'm like, I'm gonna, you know, get a couple winks. And I woke up and I'm like, oh man, looks like. A fuse got blown in my room and my power is out. So I went out and like, hey Karen, the room's out or the power's out in my room. Karen's my stepmom. And uh she says, No, power's out in the entire town, dude. So yeah, I had to let my boss know that I could no longer work. And it was out for about two hours. Dang. Yeah, yeah, maybe a little bit longer. So then I had to rally, get my work done, and then watch three incredible professional wrestling matches so I can talk to my friend on the other side of the world about pro graps. Oh, well, well I certainly appreciate it, my friend. 
Yeah, I do what I can for this beautiful podcast you have here. Oh, thank you, thank you. I uh, I hope uh, said matches were were worth uh, the the hecticness that you had to go through there. <laughs> they were all very enjoyable. I I let you know, when you sent me the list. I was very excited because it's again, once again, an eclectic mix. But I made the same mistake that I made previously. Oh no! I ended up I ended up watching the Yave match last, so I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> like oh man I, I mean i love all of this but i need some excitement and then i really yeah, but yeah same mistake as before i should have saved stan and andre or bull and kyoko for the or, you know for the fucking final match to watch well, man that is the rule you cannot watch uh lucha libre after watching uh, japanese wrestling I, I don't know why but as we said it, last time it, it doesn't, doesn't work, work. <laughs> and I love like both styles. It's just like once you're basically brought to orgasm by the like, awesome Japanese wrestling, you're like, oh man, this is like real chill. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like listening to um some some like easygoing jazz after coming back from a, a metal concert. Yeah, exactly. You're trying to re- relax and watching these guys grapple, and you're like. You know, this is too relaxing. I might fall asleep. But no, <laughs> it's still a great match. Don't get me wrong. Well, uh, yeah, I, I was honestly stoked about this weird um, trio of matches that we got. Uh, so I wasn't planning on it being three. I um, I had, it was initially, uh, I, I had uh, the, the latest of the, the uh, curator episodes where I, I was, um, uh, I got to have the Shining Wizard designs. Uh, on the the show the other week, uh, which I was I was stoked about. Everyone, uh, please uh, give that a listen. Uh, Matt is a, a lovely lovely bloke, um, uh, but then I I had a, a, a trip. Uh, I went on on vacation, as you all Americans have come to call it. Uh, uh, don't you call it holiday? Yeah, we say we say we go on holidays here. <laughs> I mean, it's fun both ways. Yeah, I, 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 it's, it's probably <laughs> for me. It sounds fun and exotic. Sound it's saying vacation, and then for you guys, it's the opposite. I guess exactly. Like I say, ooh, I'm going on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, went to, to uh, lovely uh, scenic Tasmania, a uh, beautiful ooh. place. I'd never been there before. The uh, the, the island uh, of the the Tasmanian devil. Uh, yeah, here there there are various uh, little little. Um, human suplex machines running about <laughs> oh watch out there don't mention that name you might get him <laughs> mad at you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's funny you bring that up i initially was like oh, oh cranky taz but then did you watch his sort of like explanation video <laughs> yeah but that made me think he's even a bigger dork because he's basically <laughs> crying <laughs> So for those for those playing at home, uh, so Jordan Grace came out and she posted one of her jacked up pictures or whatever with the caption uh, of uh, "Beat me if you can, survive if you let me, uh, of if I let you." Uh, so the the famous uh, catchphrase uh, of the the human suplex machine Taz in in ECW, um, yeah. and so Taz, you know, he doesn't know who the fuck Jordan Grace is. Uh, he's just like, oh, this is a worker trying to steal my no, shit. No, he knew. He says, I know her. I, I, I respect her work. And he just doesn't like anybody mentioning his catchphrase. I respect it, dude. I'm like, if you have your shit nailed down little that strong. hard, I, little I like strong. Little strong. It's not like she was trying to fucking make any money. He like felt like she was trying to make money off this tweet. He's like... In his explanation, he basically goes, I didn't know if she was, like, trying to, you know, create a T-shirt. Like, he immediately goes to AEW's uh, style of creating merchandise where somebody says something and they automatically slap it on a fucking shirt. <laughs> but honestly, I have experience with Taz being kind of a cranky bee. And I love Taz. Oh, you know, yeah, because you had the, 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 um, the meme, awesome. right, that he didn't like. Yeah. So I fucking... People may not know, but a while back, I I make all these stupid memes if people don't know who the fuck I am, where I mash up wrestlers or celebrities with wrestlers or sometimes wrestlers and wrestling personalities. Todd Grisham, I think that's who it was, had this big hubbub where he apparently was sending girls messages where he said he wanted to face fuck them and i you know <laughs> wait, i respect wait, that wait. kind of thing i, I think you, you we can't just throw that around here i don't think that was actually todd grisham wasn't it that that tall dude 
who, who was oh. famed for like sort of squatting down when he was like interviewing people. That yeah, were I thought that was than. Todd. Or is no, it Tom? That's Tom something. I think isn't Tom oh, Grisham Tom the Phil- one? Tom the one? Phillips. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he loved okay. slandering poor. <laughs> I, I bet Todd Grisham face fucks too, dude. Don't get me wrong. Come on, you're gonna say that Todd Grisham doesn't face fuck? Is that what you're trying to proclaim here? Who's anyway, yeah, I, I think it was Todd Phillips who, ironically enough, Kevin Owens used to always call Todd to fuck with him on the show. So maybe that's how I got fouled up. <laughs> Regardless, he's sending these hot messages to these hot chicks and got caught up. So I decided, hey, you know, be fun combining Taz. And this Tom Todd character into the human face fuck machine. And I had it up for a while. And it was Taz's body and Tom Todd's face. And all of a sudden I get a message from, I think it was Court, because I was on MLW doing a podcast at that time. And Court's like, hey man, um, Taz doesn't really like this and he's asking me to ask you to take it down. I'd appreciate it if you would. And I'm like, what? So I I did relent. I did take it down just because I didn't need the human suplex machine mad at me. But the guy is a bit temperamental. <laughs> that is so I've never actually heard you give like the full story explanation. I had no idea that it was it was Court that reached out to you. That's hilarious. And it might have been Farmer reach Court reaching out to Farmer <laughs> who reached out to me. <laughs> Cause I know I definitely got a DM where Somebody who I worked with at MLW told me to pull that shit down, and it was definitely coming from the top. Uh, I guess Taz reached out to court, and, you know, sh- the shit slides downhill, pal. <laughs> so good. Oh, but anyway, yeah, Jordan was just having fun quoting this wrestler, who evidently, just to add a little more to this, Taz stole his catchphrase from fucking the grappler, apparently. Hey, he didn't steal. He expanded upon. So it's standard okay. as the beat me if you can, or beat me if I let you, and then he did it like, you know. He's, he's sampling and getting upset that he's sampling portions of catchphrases. This is not a fucking term paper. We don't need to cite our sources when we're tweeting. What the fuck? <laughs> I did think her one was a bit vague. She just had the caption, so we didn't know whether she was like, "Hey, I'm the new, I'm the new human <laughs> suplex machine." This no is... one who would jump to that conclusion. That's in only Taz. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hilarious anyway. set of circumstances. Oh, it's so great! I love coming. it all. Yeah, and then Taz come in with the video where he's just trying to explain because everyone got on his ass, and he's he looks like he's basically about to cry. I'm like, hey, man. I guess he really cares about those trademarks. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> hey, man, you were a wrestler in the 90s. So you had to lock that shit down. You, you had to be protective. So, And, and I, I imagine have, I was... he, he had to go through a lot of shit to pr- try to prevent WWE from having the trademark from that. So maybe he's a bit, you know, like you were saying, a little bit gun shy. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> It also goes with this, like, he really is like that guy. Anytime anybody wears orange and black, he's like, you guys are stealing my gimmick over here. The man owns orange and black, Chris. <laughs> hey, orange and black is hard to pull off. I uh, I had a orange and black uh, t-shirt. Uh, one of, do you ever hear about the Australian band, The Beards? The Beards? I don't know, but that's an awesome name. Tremendous band. The, the entire uh, thing of this band, a little, little tangent here, is uh, just their passion for beard growing. And every song they have is Ooh. about m- male facial hair. Uh, and little... Yeah, uh, all about it. <laughs> Talking about committing to a bit, man. The best. But I have this, for sure. <laughs> this black uh, t-shirt with an orange beard on it. Uh, and... Man, I I'll be darned. I tried. I tried to pull that off, but I, I just don't don't think it worked. I, I couldn't do it. So you know, people who can I, dude, make. I the... think there might be a problem with your your approach here because you are a man with an orange beard trying to rock a shirt with an orange beard on it. People are be like, "What the fuck is going on here, guy? You're a mark for your own beard." See, that <sighs> may have been the issue. I didn't think about this. Maybe that's what's going on here. I don't know. I'm sorry I'm so ranty today. I'm like <laughs> all worked up. I'm hyped on cold brew. I'm ready to podcast. I'm a little stoned, so. I Sing like it. Back in. You're, all, you're all pepped up. I'm into <laughs> yes, it. Sir. I'm into passion, dude. This is this is fun. I think we've got a good episode on our hands. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I had the uh, mm-hmm. holiday, and then I get back, and I'm like, 
fuck, I've got I've got three matches of the week that we have to get through now. So that's what yep. we have. That's what we have today. But I was really stoked, as you said. I looked at them and I'm like, this is quite an eclectic mix. Uh, mm. You know, we have a, a match from the early '80s between Stan Hansen and Andre the Giant that is just bloody delightful Fucking phenomenal i think this is the greatest andre the giant match i have ever seen uh yeah, I, just hands down so full good. stop as they say in some areas of the world then we get uh a, um a, a tremendous as you said like a, a, a yave showcase but also like just blue panther who for everyone who doesn't know my favorite luchador of all time uh, dude who is in his in his early to mid 60s now just playing uh, the hits just pulling it all out you know the blue panther showcase it had yave it had drama it just made me so happy again just just watching blue panther do his thing and hechicera so rad as well uh and then uh we we went on to a, a tremendous joshi match uh that is <laughs> one of my my uh very favorite uh matches uh i, I think a, a perfect you know showcase of, of the the greatness of uh of uh, kyoko inoue uh and mm. uh bull nakano and just all of the the great things of early 90s all japan women and the violence and the stiffness and the emotion and all of the things so all these three i think they, they all go well together um, I think the the linking theme, if I had to put one on it, is they they all are matches that that have like an excellent emotion to them. Like they're all very expressive. If you kind of get what I'm putting down. Sure. Hundred percent. Yeah. I, uh, I have not not seen either of these two older matches, and this new match, I like literally just came out two weeks ago, so I couldn't have. But these are like legendary matches that people should seek out a hundred percent i probably the greatest women's match i've seen in a long time mm-hmm. uh if not always and then stan hansen and fucking andre just beating the crap of each other it's, it's something to see it's a fucking spectacle so good so we in the interest of us not going forever uh well let's, 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 mm. I'm, I'm trying to shoot from the hip here you know let's just go go uh for for overall thoughts we don't have to go hold by hold unless you have a specific area where you thought the holds by holds are excellent and you had some notes for us but i'm, I'm leaning into to your thoughts man uh you know i'm i'm, I'm really interested because you're having just freshly watched these we get your immediate reactions and i'm going to be honest this this may be a lack of preparation, but I haven't even <laughs> actually rewatched these matches. Uh, oh, so. you son of a bitch! <laughs> well, I, I can definitely not go hold for hold. I don't need to. I can like breeze through things I have listed and see what's important to me. For say, um, first off, first one I watched was Andre and Stan, and you know me, I like to like kind of get a vibe of the room. This place is fucking packed mm. to the rafters. It was. You couldn't see more people. It's ridiculous. Um, so this bout both... took place to, to, yes. to, to put the official things in here. Uh, a gargantuan battle from September 23rd, 1981 for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Their bloody fight series, 81. I was, I was one year old. One year old. Dude, I was, I was minus five years old. <laughs> <laughs> I was still in my father's bowels. No, uh, that's not how it works. And this one took place at uh, the the big Tokyo Denon Coliseum, which I don't think exists anymore. Uh, and yeah, there were a whole gaggle of people. But I think apparently eight, uh, thirteen, over thirteen thousand fans in attendance, and they <laughs> were bloody rabid. Uh, and and you know what was the first thing that stood out to me? They. Mm bloody loved stan hansen so much with a fear as well like they they were afraid and respected him at the same time but yeah they love stan hansen and they're just like in awe of andre so everything Mm. he does they just pop so huge for um andre and stan both look crazy young that's the first thing that struck me like Mm. look at these fucking guys and where was andre out in his career here he already had he been to the wwe before or WWE uh, wasn't he, even like the full thing. He, WWF, I guess. He was like, um, I think a, a real, uh, what's it like, a special attraction wrestler for for WWF for the yeah, uh, okay. Vince, the original Vince McMahon. Uh, so it was obviously a big name there. All the stuff through the different territories, you know, already a massive name in Japan, uh, Canada, France. Like, you know, he he was 
fucking the man already, even though we'd never sort of like had the the sort of run for for Vince Jr. and the the famous sort of like Hulkamania feud and all of that kind of thing. Yep, yep, yep. That's not, yeah, I knew it was before that, but I just wasn't sure because man, the guy could freaking move. Mm. Um, the super long hair on him just makes him look oh. like a, a giant maniac, and it just when he's running, it's just blowing in the wind. And I'm like, this guy, no wonder he was such a attraction. And people just like, we got to get an Andre into our town to make some fucking money. Oh yeah, but beautiful like, afro. I just love Andre with the afro, oh. dude. And like right at the top, like doing crazy stuff i've never seen before uh stan rushes him literally at the start of the match mm -hmm. he does a big boot as he's walking over the top rope right he's going <laughs> he's doing his like step over the top rope into the ring stan <laughs> comes after him and then mid while he's got his big foot he hits him with his sick big boot i was like it's as soon nuts. as that moment took place i was like dude this match is everything. Yeah, and Andre just sells so crazy for Stan, like stuff I didn't expect. Like, just nuts. Because Stan was a badass and a huge star, so of course he's going to do business. But if Andre didn't want to, he didn't need to. And he's just making this guy look fucking great by flying all over the place. Oh, for sure. And we saw, you know, we've seen matches with, with Andre over the years against dudes who were like fucking legitimate badasses who could murder anyone, like, you know, Akira Maeda, for example. Uh, and if, if Andre is not a fan of you, it does not matter because he is not doing much if you ever saw that Maeda versus uh, Andre match. But if he respected someone, which obviously he had a lot of respect for, for Hanson here because he gave him a lot, but it was Hanson like laid all of his shit in and then some mm -hmm. as well. So he earned it. Oh, for sure. And then Andre's busting crazy shit out. Like I've never seen Andre do a double wrist lock in my life. That was like, what the hell is going on here? It's Sakuraba the giant bananas. Dude, I loved like we had some big, big sort of like blows at the start and then it like broke down and we actually got to see some wrestling from like so these two on. huge motherfuckers and, and I loved it. Like the actual wrestling was tight, and like I I, I got it from sort of like a, uh, um, like a, a psychological kind of like standpoint of like, all right, let's let's slow down the sort of um, you know, crazy dy explosive dynamism of of Stan Hansen by you know locking on a hold kind of thing. I I really dug it. Yeah, oh yeah, it was killer. Like before I. Got into the grappling like Andre did that huge bump off the turnbuckle through the ropes and almost rolling outside. Like <laughs> he was doing stuff I had never seen the guy do before. So it was really impressive. And then just to put over how giving Andre was, the body slam that they did was so picture perfect. Mm -hmm. Like Andre fully rotated for Stan. It was fucking great. So much better than the Hogan one, right? So much better. It was a thing of beauty. I was blown away. I even. I had a feeling it happened to this match, so I hit my friend and was like, Stan fucking slammed Andre on this one. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I have this friend, Rachel, up in Canada. I actually went and visited her again uh, this past weekend, and we went and saw some wrestling, but I told her we were watching this, and she's like, that sounds awesome. I sent her the link, so she's probably going to check it out. So good. Lovely. I, I look forward to her thoughts. Yes, indeed. Um, let me see what else I have written down here. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Andre was getting, he was on get, trying to get up, and Stan drops this crazy elbow on the yes. back of his neck that, that Andre sell, sold like death. Like, he <laughs> collapsed instantly and eventually came up. And then really quick after that, the match kind of got ended when they went out to the outside. What exactly happened? Was there a 10 count? Did the referee just think they were getting too nuts and had to tell these guys to fucking chill out? What occurred? Yeah, so it was a it was a count out. Um, okay, so I didn't hear any counting. So I mean, most I was... of these matches back in the day, uh, you know, if you have a big name versus big <coughs> name, you know, as we saw with the uh, you know a lot of those uh, Abdul the Butcher kind of like matches, like all these matches that always sort of end in a a count out. It was sort of like the standard in Japanese wrestling until kind of UWF came around and started doing clean finishes and then forced the other companies to to do so as a result. <coughs> But uh, right. I thought it was it was interesting the way they did it, where we sort of <laughs> got the, the count out on the outside, and both of them are like, restart this fucking match, and then finally <laughs> we get the So match. much so they bullied the referee. <laughs> yes. They bullied the referee, and then also the, the ring announcer guy into restarting for it. It's so funny. 
Oh, man. Like Andre even grabs the referee and pulls him over to Arnold Skolnick and says, hey, Arnold, explain to him how this party is so good. <laughs> Man, and then the funniest part is I'm like, man, we're gonna get like a fucking clean finish here. What the fuck? Uh, and then you know we we get some more rad wrestling um, shenanigans, including like what I, I fucking Andre's big boot at this point. He just like hits it like he that it's, it's like, like a tree stump. Oh, and it's so stiff as well. Yeah. Like oh, so good. And he's Drew just like. Best. Like, I've never seen anyone, obviously, like, you know, Stan Hansen is a, is a massive man. Um, and, and we know, you know, Andre is, is, is you know, the Andre the Giant, so he's big, big boy. Um, but I've never seen Andre's sort of, like, sheer power as much as this, where he's just, like, there's moments where it's, like, he's not even doing, like, a big move or, when he, or whatever. He's just kind of, like, <laughs> flinging Stan Hansen or, like, doing something to him. And the way he just, like, moves him around... I've I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, it's really impressive. Like there was one time when he had them probably somewhere in the series of your illustration, both arms locked behind him, and Stan tries to move to the apron to get away. Mm-hmm. And Andre's just like, nah, fuck you. Whips him back into the center of the ring like he was a baby. Yeah. It was fucking rad. Like this is a like a three hundred pound man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's fucking thrown around like crazy. All right, then you got to explain a little bit here toward the end. So then we, uh, it finishes with, so it, I'm, I'm just a little bit fuzzy, but so Andre goes for the big boot. Uh, Stan, like, runs past it, hits him with the big, big classic lariat. And then... Uh, Andre rolls, bumps all the way to the outside. Yeah. And puts on an elbow pad. Is this like... A, a loaded elbow pad because everyone was trying to no andre you can't have an elbow pad i took it that he's like yep no i'm, I'm bringing in the loaded elbow pad that's that was my okay. assumption I, that's what i figured as well but i like you know no literally no translation <laughs> <laughs> like he was he was on the heels of defeat he'd just taken yep. the 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 lariat you know and he's basically lucky to still be be in this he happened to fall to the outside so he's coming back with the elbow pad and then it just falls amok and uh it gets thrown out again right yeah when it, the ref tries to take the lair or the elbow pad from andre and andre's like you know what hey referee you're eating the elbow pad <laughs> <laughs> and it's over <laughs> I mean, you, oh, you can only try shit. to corral two kaiju monsters like this, you know, so much. It's just chaos. Uh, as my friend Rachel would say, these big boys like to roughhouse. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, such a tremendous match. I mean, like like you're saying, it didn't, we didn't get like sort of a, a concise finish, but you rarely would in matches at, at this time. But for what it was, it was like such a spectacle. Um, and, and again, like just seeing... Th- Andre do stuff that you've never seen. Like Stan Hansen is just at his best too. Like I love just it. two legends beating the tar out of each other. Like the overhand uh, forearms by Stan, just fucking a man. Good shit. Oh, shout out to um, Elliot's wrestling uh, on on Twitter for the recommendation for that one. He had a, a tremendous thread that you can check out uh, if you you. Uh, check out his timeline uh where he basically posted a, a whole heap of really underrated um andre the giant matches uh that uh you know a lot of tremendous stuff i, I watched a, a really great one that he had with uh, with roddy piper as well that was like super fun uh he has uh, one against uh, sergeant slaughter that's that real real good as well um one against um I can't remember who it is back in the uh, IWE uh, promotion when he's even younger that I really need to get on to watch him. But, man, so good. Highly recommend checking out uh, all of the, the Andre. And, and I, I really want to now get him to see more younger Andre because, man, this dude, it's a complete different different experience to watching him in the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. You don't say, man. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous. Uh, all right. Yeah, like literally, Andre running was a concept I was unfamiliar with. <laughs> <laughs> so much of it, I thought of like, remember, you ever hear like the Princess Bride story where um, that a lot of stuff set up where they're like, oh yeah, we've got the massive Andre the Giant here, uh, but he was like so sort of like 
beat up and feeble by that point. He couldn't even like hold the weight of the princess when she was meant to like fall yeah, that, into the, his the arms. Back brace on him and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's wild to see when he was still just such a such a beast, man. I love Andre yep. the Giant. Uh, but yeah, no, the illustration was real fun to do as well. Um, and I, I, I love uh, you know drawing both of these guys. Uh, and it was it was a weird one because normally when I'm drawing either Andre or Stan Hansen, they're obviously looking massive in comparison to the other yeah. person that they're wrestling because yeah. they're two such big old boys. And then you have a match like this, and you're like, they're both huge. So if two guys are huge, no one looks huge, you know? <laughs> yeah, but that but you were you were smartly you smartly added in the referee mm. to kind of give a gauge of the size difference. So good on you that was my thinking so yeah <laughs> good on i cut on uh, yeah man yeah man uh, i do some of this art stuff myself every once in a while yeah uh-huh. yeah good good i my friend i um <laughs> all right so next next match on the bill we are now uh moving to uh mexico we're, we're jumping to the uh land of yaves uh in between Two of my all-time favorite luchadors, uh, uh, in the form of uh, of Ray Hechicero and uh, the the legend of all legends, Blue Panther. Uh, this was actually a, a recent bout. This only took place on the eleventh of June uh, of this year uh, for for CMLL. It was actually on one of their their Tuesday shows at Arena Mexico. Uh, so the big ones take place on the the Fridays, and then the Tuesdays are normally just kind of like a you know, a couple thousand people come along, and it's 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 more like a B show kind of thing. So it's not meant to be groundbreaking. Uh, but these guys got a singles match on it, and they clearly were like, you know what, motherfucker, this is this is gonna be our moment. Um, we're gonna have the match that you would expect out of uh, Blue Panther and Ray Hechicero. Uh And uh, yeah, I I was lucky enough to watch it. I currently have the base level CMLL YouTube subscription. Uh, that I think is like eleven dollars a month kind of thing, uh, and for the, to watch like the the big Friday shows live, that ta- you have to go to the the next tier up, and that gets a little bit pricey. Uh, so I was very happy that this happened to take place on a Tuesday <laughs> show because I got to watch it more currently. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I I I just was smiling like a geek watching the whole thing. I just loved it so much. Uh, but uh, please, please, what what were your initial impressions here? Well, uh, first things first, I got to ask a question. It's probably going to sound stupid, but I got to ask anyway. Uh, most of these luchador names are in Spanish. Why did Blue Panther decide to just have his name in English? Why Pantera Azul sounds pretty fucking sick. That does sound pretty cool. I mean, I don't know. You sort of get a weird combination. I don't know whether in Mexico it sounded a bit more exotic to be... <laughs> Blue oh, that might Panther, be the case. You know? Yeah. Um, Ooh. There are a few different uh, pan, Pantera uh, sort of like luchadors out there as well. So maybe maybe that was, was part of it, a bit of a distinguishing thing. Uh, All right. All right. I don't know. I mean, we, we were talk, talking about going back to the, uh, what would it have been, the early 80s when uh, Blue Panther originally started his uh, his legendary career. So That's what I mean. Like, he could have been Pantera Azul, the original guy, and everyone's yeah. like, Shit, that motherfucker's bad as fuck. But he's still bad as fuck, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. I was as, as a response, I have no idea. So if anyone anyone playing at home knows, please <laughs> please send him to the mailbag. Like there's probably no legitimate reason. Like he just chose that. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy, don't worry about it. <laughs> You're asking too many it's questions. It's an interesting question. I'm glad you brought yeah. it up. Well, speaking interest of somebody out there, maybe. Uh, so first thing I want to say is I thought it was hilarious that as soon as the ref or the ref, as soon as the ref called for this match to begin, the cameraman automatically shot to the breasted women at the top of the ramp just standing there. It's like it's like match begins, but check out these hotties. <laughs> Do you know I, I was watching another match uh, just today. Um, it was uh, Hechicero against um, Zack Sabre Jr., which bloody mm. incredible match as well. They did the exact same thing. So I think it's just one of their standards. But every match that they do, we've just got to take a moment to appreciate the hotties before we focus yeah. on the wrestling. I mean, I respect it. They they were attractive women. Um, <laughs> another thing I wanted to mention is 
play by play for a little bit started mentioning Brian Danielson, and I was really disappointed that they didn't say <laughs> Brian Lloyd Danielson. <laughs> I still pop for that man. Brian oh, God. Lloyd Danielson. <laughs> oh, fucking great. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I really like this match. Didn't take a whole ton of notes because I don't know all the names of these transitions, and I'm it'd be ridiculous. Like, so he went from arm bar to leg bar to arm bar, and I it would just get redundant. Uh, but the first thing I noticed that was really, really awesome is uh, Blue Panther does this headstand spot where he's like just kind of on his head and he's like moving his arms about, and eventually. He turns that into a, a leg pick out of nowhere. And mm. I just thought that was incredibly impressive for a, a man of his age. Oh, man, I remember that one. And the crowd, like, went nuts for it as well. Uh, and yeah. he does something. There's something real special about Blue Panther for me, where wherever he does this stuff, he just does it with such a sense of awe and wonder. Like, he's he's surprised that he was actually able to pull it off kind of thing. Oh, yeah. The look on his face sometimes. Like, he'll even look at the crowd like, did you fucking see, What? What did I just do? <laughs> yeah, it's fucking great. His, look at me winding he's incredulous. the back. He's incredulous of his own actions. It's pretty impressive. I love it. So good. And uh, I didn't realize that this was a rounds match because, again, I don't read or speak spanish too well um so when the match when the match Not suddenly ended caídas sin limite de tiempo i should have known when they said trace oh, fuck but yeah when uh all of a sudden the first round ended i was like what the fuck <laughs> blue panther got beat that quick and then they started over like oh okay cool uh, mm. i should have paid more attention I love the the round system in this. Uh, in in current days, CMLL, it used to be every match, no matter what, is always going to be two out of three falls, um, yeah. which is really how it should be at the end of the day. Uh, but uh, uh, since COVID and since I think they had some sort of um, restrictions where they had to meet a certain curfew, uh, they started like limiting certain ones down to just be single fall. Uh, matches so you now kind of get a bit of a weird mix where some matches are single fall some matches are two out of three so you do really have to pay attention to the to the ring introduction to to know what's going on there um but i thought this was such a great use of the two out of three falls um like overall it's kind of like the first ball was more of our sort of like yave wrestling kind of stuff um, and yeah, obviously Hechicero gets the better of him. And then the second fall is so darn quick. Yeah. And before they even got into the second fall, uh, the cameraman <laughs> shoots to the crowd and he catches a guy in a blue panther mask. And that guy did not look amused at all that <laughs> the blue panther lost that first round. <laughs> <laughs> then, yeah, the blue panther, at one point, I... I love a Fujiwara armbar, especially suddenly out of nowhere. So that mm. was fucking rad. But he he still, you know, gets him tapping out super quick with that bad boy. I have so much respect for submissions that you've got over to the point where if you even slap that baby on, it's an instant yeah. tap out. That that's what it should be, you know. If you if you top tier submissions, uh, I feel, and and that's what they've done for the Fujiwara with with Panther. You know, I was just watching. Like I remember the. Um, the big mask match where where Panther you know lost his mask to um to the the Viano, um and it was a similar thing there like just as soon as he got that bad boy on you know it was over for the fall, uh and and it it I think it's just so perfect you know yeah because honestly in in American wrestling it's so often just used as a a uh, rest spot to get a guy down and just hold them there for a little bit so they can both catch their breath a bit. But yeah, here fucking gets it on, locks it on, done. And he didn't even like cinch it. He just got into the mat and it was over. So that was rad. Hmm. And then at this moment, something awesome that happened. Cameraman shoots to the crowd and catches three happy gringos. Uh, <laughs> the old man, white family enjoying the professional Lucha Libre. I thought it was hilarious. The young boy in a Lucha Libre mask just having the time of their lives. So wholesome. I remember White there was, People's Taco Night. It was amazing. It's one of my favorite things of like uh, just seeing drunk gringos on the on on screen between falls yeah. or any crowd <laughs> shot. I remember there was a great thing when a while back everyone was like talking about how every match has to have sort of like character development and stories and all of this kind of 
kind of hokey shit. Um, and, and someone uh, had this amazing tweet where they basically were like, you know what, in CMLL, if ever there is a moment where you think there might be uh, some, some character development going on, we quickly cut away from it for a shot of some gringo, like, chugging down a beer and, and eating a... <laughs> Eating a churro. <laughs> yeah, so true. This was just a whole f- wholesome family enjoying Lucha Libre, but it was so funny. Just so random. Like, look at these characters. Yeah, uh, back to the match. The third fall was so crazy, dude. They just went all out and busted out all their shit. It was fucking tremendous. And The third was the real epic one, you know? What, yeah. you, what you really expect. And, and I think there's a great psychology of it. Some people sort of poo-poo the kind of thing you often see with the first two falls out of a two out of three where, you know, what, what finishes one of those early falls might, you know, that it's not going to finish the last one. But to me, if you're thinking about that psychologically, psychologically, uh, if, if this were a a shoot and you know, you know, you're possibly going to have to go three falls in this affair. Well, you're not going to like, really take some severe damage in that first fall and really like hang on like you're gonna you're gonna tap out strategically get out of it and then yep. come back for the second you know what i mean yeah and you're definitely not gonna bust out all your best shit at the very beginning and you know you might have an ace in the hole you want to bring out later such as that i'm not ha- sure what to call it but that sweet leg scissors that uh Hechicero uses where he just kind of falls to his back instead of fully rotating for like a flying head scissors oh and he lands at like a like a guillotine leg drop kind of thing. yeah yeah what is i've only seen him do it i think and it's fucking killer i, I think, think he invented bad. that dude like i mean i'm oh. not saying that with like any authority like i'm a lucha expert or anything but he's no, the only it's, dude it, in the, here here it on wiki. It. it's, it's so... on wikipedia now chris oh. Brian says hetero <laughs> invented this particular move <laughs> no i hope i'm right <laughs> <laughs> oh but yeah so sick his the hedge of Sarah's moveset is so rad man like it's obviously we get all of the the awesome like hold for hold really super innovative stuff that you never see yeah. anyone else do but then like his you know has has stuff like like that like his sweet strikes the knee in the corner like i just I yeah can't that, say that that lip, step up knee is fucking killer he did it twice in this match and both were fucking rad uh i really like all the goofy shit he does too like where he pretends he's like creating an orb in his hand <laughs> like that shit is so fucking he's awesome. a wizard dude yeah i know bro even more so than that fucking chris jericho i'll tell you that much <laughs> but I, I also like how good of a base he is like he's just helping I know not totally helping, but helping Blue Panther getting from move to move, even like assist him and shit and getting mm. his hands in the right places, like just so good. All looks so fluid. Yeah, there's, there's a lot where if you're, you're really watching this one closely, you can see, um, you know, obviously, you know, I, I absolutely the love stronger, Blue younger Panther, guy. But yeah, it's like you can see it, it means a lot to Hechicero to be wrestling a guy, you know, that is obviously such an idol to him as, as Blue Panther and that he's going to, you know, bring him to the, the best match that they can they could possibly have um yep. but yeah like you mentioned the the step up knee I, it yeah. made me remember like what the, the coolest bit of that was it just looks so violent against <laughs> the older gentlemen such as panther <laughs> and then panther's like celibate of sort of like the head bubble kind of like if they yeah. just like we were talking about him being incredulous about his own offense he was like whoa what the fuck that rocked me i love <laughs> Yeah, he has the best facial reaction. Maybe that's why even more beneficial that he doesn't wear the mask anymore because he can sell even further. Yeah. Yeah. But I just love he does all his shit. Like, he does the flipping senton from the outside and the fans go fucking nuts. Then then he does a tope suicida, like, pretty rapidly after that. Mm-hmm. Then just a bit later, he's doing his crossbody off the fucking apron or the ramp. That was that was it, man. I was like, I, I was I was stoked off of the first, you know, like Tope Suicida, and I was like, man, yeah. we've really seen it all tonight. Not yeah. yet done. <laughs> Three times, and that th- the one off the off the ramp was like fucking spectacular, man. Like I, I, yeah, uh, I was very close to making that the moment of the the uh, for the the illustration. But the only negative of that is like it is this amazing visual of you know the the older blue panther just like diving uh, and and all of the the awe and, and wonder of that moment. But you're just seeing sort of the back of um of Hechicera's mask, 
like when he's sort of like standing there kind of like ready to catch him or whatever so mm. that was that was a reason why i thought this this other one of um where it's like you know panthers really like taking him to school and hetcher sarah kind of has this like face where he's like he's in the corner just having a little breather just like the fuck this old man has beaten my ass what the fuck's <laughs> going on <laughs> hilarious <laughs> that's awesome yeah it's fucking great and uh, just the subtle splashes of the pink is fucking awesome on there I love it or salmon is that salmon Chris or is that pink I, I you could call it you could call it one or the other I think salmon okay. sounds nice oh salmon I mean it's a, it's a beautiful mask I think Edge Sarah's overall look is is absolutely top tier between like how beautiful the mask is his the thick sweet, waistband like, titty straps Yep. Yeah, thick waistband. Man, he's got it going on. Yep. He, he even does the arm tape, so he, like, accents his muscles. Like, yeah. He's super rad. Um, also, I want to say that Blue Panther, I like, I didn't watch many of his matches before, but he definitely has put himself into favorite lucha contention um i must say he's fucking awesome i just love as we mentioned all the goofy reactions and shit and i mean you guys have been doing it for so fucking long how could you not respect this motherfucker oh absolutely i definitely think i need to uh go back when and there's a, a week that i uh you know there's not a lot of current stuff going on i definitely need to treat myself to some uh, sort of like blue panther in his prime like 90s uh, early 2000s kind of stuff i uh, here there's a, a tremendous series of matches that he had with uh, Love Machine Art Bar uh, back in the day that I, I cannot imagine uh, anything but uh, incredible. Uh, same, he had a really great one that I'm, uh, I haven't actually seen with Atlantis that's on my, my watch list, two of my favourites there. So don't don't worry, everyone. There's, there's much more Blue Panther goodness to come. <laughs> yes, indeedy. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think I, I can't remember the the specifics uh, of the the finish of this. Fish. But after we got all of the the best of Blue Panther, uh, it was Hedgesera like Hedgesera like just wrapped him up a bunch of different ways, and eventually got this crazy arm bar where he's like pulling it from behind. Yeah, it was yeah, it looked uh, not comfortable. I'll say that much. Yes, you just, you just and then the best him. bit. The best bit, Chris, at the very, mm. very end, crowd shot of the guy who was previously in the Blue Panther mask, and he had a different mask on, this yellow one with, like, a pentagram or something on it. Like, he has now turned his back on Blue Panther after this. <laughs> <laughs> no! It was rad. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I love to. I'd like to think that people at uh, uh, to these these shows kind of treat it like football. Where you're like a football fan, you know, you got the mask or the jersey or whatever. You've really committed. And at a certain point, your team loses so many times, you're like, you know what? I'm I'm picking another team. Maybe that's <laughs> what happened. I don't know. <laughs> but tremendous, tremendous stuff, uh, and uh, so much heart in it. And yeah, I just uh, adored this match. This was was one that it, you know might be uh, up to the the eye of the beholder. Not sure that everyone would love this this match uh, as much as I do, but I'm I'm stoked to hear that it sounds like you enjoyed it, my friend. Yeah, I just think Blue Panther's rad, and even though you know he's up there, he's still fucking giving it his all. The the three crazy dives toward the end, I was just like, yeah, th- this guy. He's given it all for this audience. Mm-hmm. And then that brings us oh. on to our final match of our triple main event of uh, of matches of the week. Uh, that being our, our Joshi match uh, from 1991, September 7th for All Japan Women's. Uh, the, the show is entitled AJW The Exciting Zone. <laughs> uh, at Corican Hall <laughs> for the WWWA World Championship between uh, Bull Nakano and Kyoko Inoue. Yeah, man. Um, first off, I gotta say, I love the way these two women wrestle because they immediately start beating the shit out of each other and just screaming at the same time, like guttural screams, like ah, it's like the fucking war cries are fucking awesome. 
Oh, all about it. And the entrances, don't get me started on the entrances. Something oh, about, like, Kiriko Noe, like, running down to the ring, the, the tassels, the ultimate warrior, f- like, face paint. Uh, I, I like to think that she just watched saw the ultimate warrior and was like, yeah, dog. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a good... I like that theory as well. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Yeah, well, I'd we're running with it. I just added it to Wiki. Than... I just added it to Wiki. Chris Bryan. Slightly... All right, all right. We got a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of Chris experts opinions adding on here that I have no idea if any of them are true. Uh, but I'd, I'd like to think she's a tad better uh, in ring uh, wrestler than Ultimate Warrior was. But uh, yeah, that's that's not for me to say. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, uh, just the, the entrances and the 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 uh, contrast between the two of like her energy eyes-wise. versus like Bull's energy. Yeah, she, Kyoko looks so excited at first, but there's a brief moment where like she looks very afraid after she gets Bull all bloody. I just love that bit. Like blood just starts pouring down Bull's face, and she's like starts stalking toward Kyoko, and she looks scared as fuck, understandably. Bull's like the final boss of female wrestlers to me. It's like she's just a fucking badass. Yeah, it's like a kind of like a monster movie, you know, where she I think she like took a post or went into the rail on the outside or something, came back, uh, just looking somehow even more badass than she did previously. Uh, big big fan specifically of this match as well because of her wearing that amazing Grateful Dead uh, shirt. Um, Hell yeah, I have like a parody of that. I have the same one. I think we both That's got a good shirt. that, that yeah. bootleg order, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, but she somehow looks even more terrifying, covered in blood, uh, approaching her opponent than she did beforehand. Uh, yeah. And yeah, then, then the hair sort of goes from like the, the classic, you know, up, up straight blue hair to when the blood kind of like gets it all over the place. Such a cool visual. Yeah, man. It's fucking gnarly. And she's like, these ladies, like, really? <laughs> they don't appear to be pulling any of this shit. Like, there's a lariat that where Bull, like, takes Kyoko's head off. And then she, like, this high angle power bomb that looks stiff as fuck because this ring does not move whatsoever. It's one of the stiffest rings. Like, 80s WWE stiff. It's oh, fucking yeah. nuts. This, a lot of this looks quite gnarly. Um, I have to ask a question. Mm. That head scissors takedown, that where the wrestler like runs and jumps, it kind of flips upside down and catches both the sides of the feet on the side of the head and like pulls them over. What is that actually called? Because I want to remember in case I have to call it in a match. You know the spot I'm talking about, friend? I'm a little, little foggy on it, to be honest. So you're not talking about like the classic sort of like, you know, hurricane it's like a head scissors up kind of deal. No, it's not a hurricane because she doesn't jump up and like put her legs over each side. It's just they flip. She flips upside down and catches both the sides of her feet on the neck. I man, I'll try to pull it up and see if I can send it to you. Vamp, not like talk. a like a T Harris kind of thing. That's ex- that's what it is. T Harris. That's the name I was looking for. Thank you, sir. Woo! We got there. We got yep. There. See, I knew I were describing. You would figure it out. No, you did it. Proud of you, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we got there. Or hmm? you're wrong, and I'm adding it to Wikipedia as Chris <laughs> Bryan. <laughs> I'm gonna have to issue so many corrections at the end of this episode. <laughs> yes, oh, man. <laughs> uh yeah that um there's a really interesting point um in this match so again it's sort of like to me broad strokes and it's kind of like we have this crazy energetic uh uh, enthusiastic um kyoko noe who's just wrestling with so much heart she's so much smaller than than bull um and and she's also like such a, a badass actual wrestler you know when it comes to the submission kind of stuff almost like you have like the f- fiery charisma of a fucking i don't know uh someone very <laughs> ultimate warrior for example meets like the <laughs> wrestling skills of like a dean malenko and that's, there you that's go. kind of what we what we have here um but i i i loved it that 
so we have that, and obviously, you know, Ball is this, this massive, uh, un, unbeatable beast. Uh, but, and there's a few bits where, um, you know, Kyoko was going for, I can't remember if she's gone for, like, the surfboard stretch or something yeah. like that. And she tries quite a few times to, to get Ball off of this, uh, and it ain't working. And then the crowd, like, really gets behind it and trying to get it to do it again. And Ball is just very big, you know? Uh, and it doesn't work again. But but somehow this, you know, some people could look at this as, like, a massive fuck-off of the match. But then the way they sort of, like, went with it and kept going, and it's almost like it, it got Kyoko or Noe over even more to the fans because they know she tried. Even though she fucked up, but she tried, and she tried again, and she tried again. She still couldn't get it, but it didn't stop her from trying, and she ended up putting on, like, a Texas cloverleaf or something else, you know, in, instead. But I remember thinking when I first saw this that, you know, that's something where some people would be like, oh, botch, all right, this match has been taken down a star. But, uh, you know, it's like we, we say sometimes, sometimes these rough around the edges bits kind of, like, somehow add to it. Um, sure. I don't know what was your feeling seeing that bit. Well, no, I, I I remember there was a bit where she kept on muscling it up or trying to get her over, and eventually got her up onto her knees at least and pulled her back. And yes. Bull was like, mm-hmm. has her head back screaming, and the blood's just pouring down her face. It's one of the coolest visuals. I even recorded it and sent it to my friend. Like, look at this fucking shit. Yeah, the you're hundred <laughs> percent right. Kilko is so tenacious. It, it's very tenacious impressive. Is an excellent word. Yeah, yeah. She, like, throws her entire body into everything, and because she is so much smaller, she needs that extra weight to get the impact, but it's definitely fighting from the bottom babyface stuff, but totally credible. She doesn't look like just going through the emotions. Some, you know, you know what I mean? Like, just the fear I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the match was only there for a brief moment. After that, it was totally gone. You could see it in her face. She did not give a fuck. Yeah, and I think it's the, um, like, that's the, the emotion that we were, t- I was talking about before as well. Sort For of sure. Like, the real uh, expression of this match uh, and the heart of it. Like, there was, there was so much heart. Like, she tries to go for the giant swing. Like, she's going to try to giant yeah. swing this woman. <laughs> <laughs> she literally gets around for, a, like, a quarter of a revolution. But she fucking got her up. <laughs> yeah. And, and the crowd, like... Ate it up, dude. That was my yeah. other favorite part. Like, for all of this, this, this Corican crowd was bloody electric. And, you know, so many, like, um, you know, like female fans as well that, uh, you know, I think this match was was hugely uh, influential, uh, you know, throughout the, the, the rest of the, the 90s. And, um, you know, you, you think of, of uh, all the people that are like watching this and like, man, that is that is fucking badass. And it feels like it took, uh, you know, American women's wrestling so long to, to catch up to that point, you know? Yeah, man, that's why my opinion of women's wrestling took a while to become respectable. And I don't mean the women's wrestling was respectable. My opinion <laughs> was terrible until I saw you know, some of this stuff and the women in the late nineties started to pick it up. Kind of Trish was a good example of that in the WWE, but yeah, women's wrestling really wasn't great for a period of time in the U S unfortunately. And it sucks because it shouldn't have been that way. Like we had, um, you know, do you remember when we, we got a brief glimpse of, uh, of, of bull Nakano in yep. WWF, you know, having rad matches against, um, against uh, Medusa and yep. Then Vince is just that. Oh no no no! We we cannot have uh, women wrestling like this and showing up the guys. All right, let's scrap this whole division. Goodbye. Yeah. So ridiculous. And yeah, the Bull Nakano brief stint was something that, like, when I was that age, blew my mind because I. You look at her, that is a fucking star. Like the look itself is so cool. She looks unusual, mm. but also totally badass. It's like. Yeah, so marketable in my opinion. They could have like put her on shirts and just made a ton of bucks. I mean, they they knew how to market it in Japan. Just uh, apparently, Vince McMahon Junior's uh, WWF was not ready for it at the time. Uh, but yeah, man, I I and going into like the finishing sort of like bit of this match and uh, sure. seeing like Bull really break out some 
crazy offense. You know, the big kick out of her her signature um, leg drop, which I I must say I think is I think the greatest guillotine leg drop of, uh, of in all of wrestling. I don't think it's anyone fair. does it has has done it with such uh, I don't know force, <clears throat> just <clears throat> impressiveness. Oomph is a great word for it. Those thick thighs and lives, man. Thick thighs and lives. <laughs> man, I guess a lot of this match that I was watching, and I was like, you know, I think Ball's actually pretty hot. Uh, what do you mean? Like, you're just coming to that conclusion? Like, that's been my thing the whole time. <laughs> it's like that like, meme, right? Fucking ki- kill me. Kill me. <laughs> like, you need, um, I will lay down for that I... leg drop. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> And then, like, somehow Kyoko Noe kicks out of this leg drop. Crowd yep. goes insane. We had, I, I can't even remember what it was, but it was one of the gnarliest looking rad suplexes that I've ever seen that, that Bull broke out at another point. That was, like, I, mind-blowing. Yeah, she did, she did a bridging suplex at one point that was so high angle, it looked like she was going to drop Kyoko right on her head. And then, like, really rapidly after that is when Kyoko does that that German where they... The positioning was so good for a false finish. I it was so mm. good. She barely, Bull barely got her foot touching the bottom rope. This was before the finishing bit. I just wanted to give respect to that because the positioning was so perfect. Yeah, and the, the, like then uh, the the moonsault from Bull. Like, I even Ugh. completely forgot that she did a sick moonsault, man. Yeah, there was one other spot before the moonsault was. Uh, Bull did like a reverse DDT, like kind of lifted it up and doing the reverse DDT. They called it a tiger driver. Is that a variation that I was unaware of? Ooh, perhaps. I, I can't uh, quite remember the, the movie. It was like just like a reverse but, DDT, I mean, but literally they said, tiger driver. I was like, what the fuck? Ooh, Sorry for my terrible Japanese. I, uh, could be. <gasps> I... The moonsault itself, to go back to it, was incredible. And pin position, like pinpoint accuracy, so good. She rules. Death to Kyoko. Yeah, this this just was everything to me, man. Like this, you know. I, I think Kyoko Noe is uh, is is one of my all time favorite, um, you know, female wrestlers, Joshi wrestlers, um, and and she's a name that I think some fans like it might not be. As familiar as like a, a um, you know Minami Toyota or a Kira Hokuto or Bull Nakano or Aja Kong, um, but but she is was and and she still wrestles to this day. Uh, it's totally awesome. So uh, yeah, if uh, if you dig this, I, I highly recommend um, checking out more Kyoko in Norway. Yeah, I, I'm familiar just because of a bunch of wrestling gifts over time because she does some pretty insane stuff like all her backwards sent on splashes basically off the fucking uh, second rope like without even looking she's just throwing herself backwards into people and it's totally nuts and totally awesome oh that reminds me she did that in this match like with such <laughs> reckless abandon um, yeah at least three or four times shouted to me like Okay, I know where where Darby got the <laughs> got the coffin drop from, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's definitely could be some in, some inspiration, gimmick infringement, even bastard. <laughs> and uh, need to give massive shout outs to her incredible uh, entrance music of uh, Van Halen. Yeah, that was fucking ki- a, a actual surprise. I was like, what? <laughs> Actually, I shouldn't be shocked because. Music rights aren't necessarily so important in professional wrestling. Uh, I reckon that'd probably be pretty expensive to license these days. But uh, yeah, I guess in Japan you can get around those things. And I, and I popped big for uh, Bulls, like 80s monster movie theme music too. <laughs> like with the synthy oh, yeah. awesomeness. Like you watched a John Carpenter movie or something. So good. Tremendous. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, three very enjoyable matches. Um, I, I, you know, it, I think the this this little wrestling thing uh, is it's best when you get uh, such eclectic uh, variety, um, and and that's what I I really used to love about you know watching some of those comp tapes back in the day that like Rob Naylor used to put together 
or like Phil Schneider or any of these like really tape trading like OGs. Um, so being able to sort of have a little eclectic mix of matches like this uh, that that can go together in such a weird way, it, uh, yeah, it makes me smile in, in the same way. Yeah, man. Uh, you, you don't see regular wrestling shows with three matches like this on them, and maybe they should more. You know, mix it up, get some more crazy shit going on. I'd love to see a death match and a Yave match on the same show. More shit for the for the freaks. Yeah, for the sickos, as Tony for likes sure. to call them. My good buddy, Tony. <laughs> oh, Tone Bone. Man, I need to get onto that um, show that the the Segunda Caída dudes put together over um, Mania Weekend. Uh, that one uh, sounded like it had exactly what we're talking about, that kind of like wild, um, eclectic, sicko mix of wrestling between deathmatch stuff uh, and uh, crazy submission Yave stuff and all of that kind of thing. I uh, definitely have that show on my watch list if we're talking about stuff for the sickos. For sure. Hey, actually, you know what? If you ever want to do a show watch recap here and you could pick one of those matches to draw, I would definitely be down to watch that show. Ooh, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. All right. Let me know. All right. Well, Let me know. I think that, uh, that, that Dean show might be the one because I'm uh, very excited about that. All right. Well, well, friend, do you have any other thoughts about this trio of matches or anything else in general? Um. Well, I I don't know. I've said quite a bit about these three matches here, so probably done with that. Um. I just want to say thanks again for having me on the show, and look forward to watching Dean with you. Dude, I would love that. I very appreciate, very much appreciate you uh, coming on the show, uh, especially when uh, when it looked like there was a bunch of real life things that might be making it difficult here. Um, but no, dude, always always appreciate you. Uh, and uh, do you have anything that you'd like to plug ski today? Sure, I'm more than happy to plug. Uh, I want to first plug me. Jeremy Tate, aka James Vanderbeek. You can follow me on social media, um, Instagram and Twitter. Please do. A lot of people find me amusing. But yeah, it's at James Vanderbeek, J A I M S Vanderbeek. Uh, if you like wrestling and stupid jokes, and that's basically it, um, that's where you want to go. And um, I also want to promote the wrestling company I'm associated with. We actually have a show coming up this weekend, Saturday, June the 29th, at Old Stove Brewing Ship Canal in Seattle. Uh, We'll also be on IWTV. So if you want to watch some wrestling with me and my friends, please do. Um, Yeah, we also have another show coming up next month. If you're interested, which is going to be on the 12th of July, it's SOS Pro Wrestling Presents Wet Hot Island Summer. It's a wacky wrestling show where we're all on an abandoned island. It's good times. These show names keep getting better and better. Or deserted, not abandoned. Deserted. Yeah, they're kind of wacky, aren't they? <laughs> It'd be a weird abandoned island we're all sitting on there. I'm into it. I'm into it. I need to learn how to remember what words mean. <laughs> this is an island that used to be... <laughs> This island used to be quite an exciting tourist hotspot, but then the the currency went to shit and it's since been abandoned. And we've rediscovered it and we're having a wrestling show there. Woo! (laughs) Good times, my dude. Well, uh, I also would like to uh, thank uh, everyone for listening to the show. Uh, I I thank you as well for for the people that, uh, you know, financially support the things and and buy my art which which makes me very happy uh you know buying uh art prints of of said matches of the week uh, sometimes people uh, even buy the the original uh pen illustrations that that made that uh that digital illustration a thing uh, which I think is very cool as well. Uh, but uh, if, if you dig that kind of stuff, if you're not already, follow me at Chris Things on the Instagram, Chris Things on the Twitter. Uh, and, uh, of course, don't forget to go to christhings.com.au uh, where you can check out all of the, the different art prints. I've got originals, I've got T-shirts, I've got calendars, mugs, uh, what have yous. Uh, and yeah, if you if you you know dig that stuff and want to have it on your wall, uh, please know that I always feel extremely complimented. 
by you choosing to do such things. So thank you very much there. Uh, and, yeah, I think we've reached the tail end of the show here. Uh, and I almost forgot to do something very important, which is thanking the guys that allow me to do this thing, Social Suplex. Uh, that is the, the Social Suplex podcast network, socialsuplex.com. Uh, a whole bunch of other rad wrestling podcasts on there as well. Uh, including One Nation Radio, uh, Keeping It Strong Style, uh, Imp's WWE Adventure, uh, the Trish and Sarah podcast, and of course, how could I, how could I forget, Tunnel Talk, <laughs> uh, which we we have a lot of good time riffing on on what that that show might be. I don't I didn't think of any other names for that at all right now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, thanks Social Suplex uh, But lastly, thank you to you The listener for spending uh, An hour and uh, and A bit uh, listening to us Ramble on uh, Like the um, uh, uh, Do you Do you, my friend, Jeremy uh, Do you uh-huh. consider yourself A, a AD, ADHD ADD <laughs> You what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> yes Wait, I think of identity you know you know you might yeah, you know the outside 100%. world might might look at you and say hey that motherfucker is definitely add but i don't know 100 <laughs> percent people's have, have, look at my twitter look it's like stream <laughs> of consciousness nonsense oh man can i say one last thing before please, we get out here Chris? please please uh remember huck two on that thing <laughs> what a way to end it <laughs> I just thought of it literally right now. Like, oh, I gotta say, Hawk 2. <laughs> We're so current. <laughs> All right, pal, that was a lot of fun. Hit me up about Dean, because that, that sounds a lot of fun. Dude, I would And I want to make sure that. I watch it close to when we record, so we're not just sitting there like, yeah, I think I remember this thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one. Like, I, I normally yeah. try to re-watch the matches. For this one, it was like, honestly, like I was, I didn't want to, you know, make you have to wait any any longer. Uh, but also, I was like, you know what? If I, if I watch it too close, I'm going to have too many notes. I'm going to get too bogged down, so... You know, I don't know. Is it just unprofessionalism? Maybe a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I respect it. The lack of respect for your own product, I respect. You keep it together, man. You're, you're the one taking the notes here. You're keeping us afloat. Yeah, otherwise I wouldn't remember. It's that whole ADHD thing, buddy. <laughs> All right, pal. We'll talk soon. Thanks, dude. Appreciate you. Later. Peace.